Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Real Agriculture. Today, I'm down at Ridgetown, Ontario, at the Ridgetown campus of University of Guelph at Diagnostic Days. And I'm joined by uh, University of Guelph professor Dave Hooker. Dave, how's it going? Yep. Going great. Awesome. Hey, now, we are in the middle, standing here, of the 25-year uh, long-term rotational trials. And uh, really an amazing accomplishment to keep this going for 25 years. Dave, tell us a little bit about the history and, and what's going on in this site. Yeah, well, actually, it's not 25, actually, it's 28, but that's good. It's good. So it started in 1995. We have two tillage systems comparing, compared here, no-till or a quasi-no-till versus conventional, seven crop rotations, and then in the wheat and corn phases, we have four rates of nitrogen. So if you multiply all those numbers up, 56 treatments, and then it's replicated for, each one is replicated four times. So we have close to 300 plots here. and some amazing data and Dave we were talking about you know you know rotation and uh, the impact that it can make um, on crops but you got to be patient it uh, you said it takes time for rotational changes to impact your cropping system yeah that's right um, burn we have really we have short-term changes and so if we do something drastic to uh, to let's say a cropping system if you're a conventional till person mm -hmm and you switch to no-till, obviously there's going to be some change. We have some short-term changes, but there are also many long-term changes. And that's what this trial is all about. This is, we call this a long-term experiment. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, look at those changes that can answer some of those long-term questions. And how long does it take to change? Well, we have, depending, um, depending on what we have or what we're looking at in the soil, uh, quite often we say, you know, it could take something like a tillage change, a drastic tillage mm -hmm. change could take between 15 and 18 years for that system to stabilize or equilibrate. And so that's why we need these long-term trials. Now, Dave, you had a couple of questions today about, you know, yield plateau. Um, are crop yields plateauing? And you said, you know, it all depends. And it's a little different story in um, a rotation system. Yeah, that, that's right. I'd be happy to talk about that. I hear lots of terms like plateauing. Mm -hmm. And it just, it seems, it makes me chuckle a little bit just to hear plateau because I guess it depends on how you define plateau. I, it's just like defining dead. How dead is it? Is it kind of dead? Is it, is it a little bit dead? So our crops are yielding higher and higher every year. It doesn't matter what crop rotation that we're in. Um, there is a, a small yield increase and that's really attributed to, uh, to advances in plant breeding. Mm. But we know that in some cropping systems, because again, this is a long-term experiment, we can look at these trends. We know that in some cropping systems, that plateau or the rate of yield, inc that plateau or rate of yield increase is not quite as high on some rotations versus another. And continuous soybeans, for instance, that rate of soybean yield increase with continuous soybeans, it, there's a little bit of increase there, probably due to advances in plant breeding, but it's not as high, or the increase is not as high, let's say, as a soybeans on a corn, soybean, wheat rotation. Mm -hmm. And we can say the same thing with corn as well. Right. On a corn, soybean, wheat rotation, that rate of yield increase, year by year basis, is, um, is increasing or is higher compared to, uh, let's say, a continuous corn system. Yeah. Hey, let's talk more about wheat. This is, I know it's one of your, your, your favorite rotational crops. And tell us a little bit about, um, and we've talked about it in the past, but you know, the impact that wheat can make on the rotation and the yield in those are crops. Yeah, like you said, like we talked a lot about it in mm -hmm. the past, but we talk a lot about it just because it is such a great yeah. story, yeah. you know, that wheat has. And, and Peter Johnson, he just loves the story. Joanna Fallings loves the story yeah. as well, because of course they're, they're involved more, like a lot in wheat. They love wheat mm -hmm. as I do as well. But wheat has tremendous um, capabilities of increasing the yield of corn and soybean, let's say in a corn, soybean, wheat rotation. And so I always tell my students, I tell growers when I stand in front of them, when they're making a decision to plant wheat, we really have to give wheat the credit for the higher soybean yields that we get with wheat in rotation and higher corn yields. 
And with soybean yields, we're looking at about five bushel per acre, more soybean yields when we have wheat in the rotation. And corn, it varies between six and 17 bushel per acre. And usually in, in the hot, dry years, that's where we see the biggest yield increases, but those are averages. That was my next question. Um, the impact that we can make from a resilience perspective when we get into those tough years. Yeah, that's, that's right. And so I don't know about you, Burn, but I like to meet my income to be relatively stable, right? I don't want Mother Nature to play with my income, and a lot of farmers, they don't like that as well. Mm -hmm. Just from the views on Twitter, like, I wish it would rain, um, when are we going to get some rain or too much rain? Like, nobody likes that. We want a system that's more resilient against these curveballs that Mother Nature keeps throwing at us. And we know that in a, in a rotation where we have, we, especially wheat in the rotation, we have more resilient, our, rot our crops are more resilient in those kinds of rotations. Hey, final thing, and you mentioned it takes time to sort of to, to, to see how uh, change, uh, you know, impacts throughout a rotation. You've added strip till here in, in, yeah. in, in, in the not so distant past, um, and you're seeing the difference that that can make. Tell us about that. Yeah, exactly. So if I was a grower, I am a grower. And I just love the strip till system because it mitigates some of these, um, I, I guess, um, effects that planting corn into no-till by no t with no tillage into fairly heavy soil. So this is a Brookston clay loam here. So if I was a grower, I would really seriously select a strip till system because it mitigates some of that those cool, wet, early soil conditions. I want to plant my corn early. I don't want anything to delay that corn. And that's what strip till really offers this experiment, especially because it allows corn to be planted at the same time, if not earlier even, than in the plowed system does. Yeah. And before we had, with this experiment anyway, we had to wait for a couple days before the no-till soil was, was more fit. And now we don't have to do that. And the same thing happens on the farm as well. If a grower doesn't have to wait for that soil to dry out, um, maybe it would give them a few more days of planting and, and higher corn yield potentials. Hey Dave, um, some great insights, some great work. Uh, 28 years yeah. uh, on, on the rotational uh, crops here. Um, thanks for taking the time. Always great to have you on the Oh, Thanks, it's been a blast.